Our first panelist is Dr. Rochelle Seifer, and the title of her dissertation is an analysis of how teacher education programs prepare teachers to meet the instructional needs of English learners. She is receiving the award for outstanding dissertation in higher education. Let's welcome her. Hello, everyone. So thanks for spending your Friday night with us. We all appreciate it. Um, like you said, my name is Rochelle Seifer. That's me, um, doctor. And I did my dissertation on English learners and teacher preparation, which was super exciting. Um, I worked for the Center for Teacher Quality for over a decade, so I was used to doing teacher preparation, but not looking at it how I did here. So I'm really excited to share uh, my results. First off, though, I want to say thank you to my dissertation committee, because like Dr. Loiza said, I wouldn't be here without them. Definitely not. They were phenomenally helpful. And my cohort, my magnificent seven, got to give it up for you guys. I would not be sane if it weren't for you guys. Um, so this is my dissertation again, analysis of how teacher education programs prepare teachers to instruct English learners. Um, first, we started off with a problem. So what is the problem that I wanted to solve? And I looked through survey data for over a decade, and the biggest gap that I saw constantly in teacher preparation was how English learners are prepared. So this is just a quick graph. So I did something similar to this when I started. This is using 2016 standardized test scores in ELA and math. And you can see here the achievement gap between English learners and non-English learners. It's huge. It's between 30, uh, 20 and 30 percent based on English or math. So what I wanted to do is kind of see where do teachers feel that they were prepared and where do they not. So this, was, this is when I started to look into everything, right? We do this big literature review. I read about everything that everyone's ever done based on English learning and, um, or English learners. And so I found two separate theories, right? So one is if you just learn just good teaching practices, you'll be fine. You just learn how to manage a classroom, differentiate instruction. You could teach anyone. You're a teacher, you can teach. Another uh, theory that I saw, though, was you need to learn basic, like specific EL uh, specific instruction. So I need to know how to work with my English learners. I need to know how to increase their academic language. I need to know how to build on them. I need very um, varied assessments to make sure that they're learning what I'm teaching. And this is this is where I went back and forth. I'm like, okay, so what is it? Is it just good teaching practices, or is it do you really need to learn specific strategies, right? So this is you know kind of went there, and then I went out to overall feel prepared to teach English learners. So let me tell you a little bit about the surveys that I had. So I worked for the Center for Teacher Quality for all 23 CSUs. At the end of your teaching credential program, you're given a survey. It's called an exit survey. And you take it and you say, how well prepared do I feel that the university taught me to teach this, 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 classroom management, differentiated instruction, um, it was technology, I mean, pedagogy, everything you could possibly think of. I think the survey was 100 questions, really long survey. So we asked them all these questions. And then they go off and they start teaching, right? They go into the teaching field and the universities get this analysis that we give them and they say, okay, this is what we need to work on. So you meet with your teachers and you say, this is what your recently graduated students have said. Well, then the teacher's teaching for a year and they're in the classroom, you know, like they're all excited, they get in there and they're like, wait, wait, I didn't learn that. <laughs> How do I do this? You know, the, the practical part of it. So we found them and ask them to answer these questions again, one year later. So you've taught now, you're here. How do you feel your university prepared you? Do you still feel the same? Do you feel less prepared? Do you feel more prepared now that you've been in the classroom for a year? So this is what, what I focused on. And I thought it was so cool because we have the exit survey and the one year out survey, and they'd never been looked at together, even though we know exactly who took them, what they, how they answered, who they are, where they're teaching, everything. Never been looked at together, so I'm like, yeah, I get to do like this huge, big analysis. I'm a data geek. So, oh, let's go back. So, I focused on English learners. So, my two research questions. My first one was kind of curiosity. How well do they pre feel prepared to teach English learners from here to here? So, it's like my my uh, paired samples t test. That's what I got to use. So, do they feel more prepared? Do they feel less prepared? And then my second research question was, okay, so what 
uh, specific instruction and preparation do they have that does make them feel, that will predict that they feel overall prepared to teach English learners? So what can we focus on to make them feel overall prepared? So I'm looking at a predictor. So all, all of this is quantitative, very, very SPSS, hardcore focused. So this is what I found, and this, this was just amazing to me. So on every question I looked at, focused on EL, but I also, because I was curious, looked at the entire survey. On every question that they answered on the exit survey, they felt less prepared one year after being in the classroom. Every. Statistically significant at the .000 level. Like, crazy. There's no coincidence there. After teaching for a year, teachers don't feel as prepared as they thought they did. You know, and I was reading studies and studies about burnout and uh, teachers leaving and attrition and how do we keep our teachers if they're coming into the classroom and they're feeling, you know, all pumped up and then all of a sudden they're like, oh, I didn't learn that. I didn't get to, to do that. There was no hands-on experience there. So there's one gap. Like, how do we make sure that our teachers are feeling prepared to teach when they enter the classroom? So the second question that I looked at that was focused on English learners, I want to know what is it? Is it really those just good teaching practices? Or is it those specific strategies that a teacher needs to know to feel like they're really prepared to teach the English learners? I didn't say it in the beginning, but in California, one in four students are English learners. That's huge, right? And that achievement gap, that's every classroom teacher is going to have an English learner in their class at some point. So they need to know these. Okay. So um, I did two regression analysis. I did a binary logistic regression, which is really cool, just making dichotomous variables. Were they prepared? Were they not prepared? And looking at those. And I have to read this real quick because it's been a while. But I found that there are just good teaching practices that do make a teacher feel like they're prepared overall to teach English learners. It's not just specific strategies. And it just blew my mind. I was like, no, my whole hypothesis, it's down the drain. What happened? I thought you really had to know how to teach an English learner to teach them. But there's other areas you can, you can focus on. So classroom management, huge. Differentiating instruction, huge. And meeting the needs of diverse or special learners. So if you can meet a diverse population's needs, then you can teach English learners. So I kept getting pushback though. I'm like, so come on, let's do another class at the university level on classroom management. And all the professors are like, and then what? Like, what do we take away? How do we put that in? It's like, no, you have, to, you have to get this in there somewhere. Like, these are three big ones. And then for the specific though, there were two specific English learner uh, strategies that I found. So developing the academic language at VL students. So our English learners are going around, you know, we talk, we have our street language, whatever, but learning academic language so you can do well in a classroom and do well on a standardized test, and that's complete, it's different. Some words don't mean the same thing. And when you're testing, what was it, it was like avocado. It just, it, there was a word where it just, you don't understand. So if you don't understand what the question's asking, how are you gonna answer it? So knowing the academic language. Um, the second analysis I did was a fixed effects panel regression. So this was really cool. So since I knew who took both surveys and I could tie them together, I could control for individual characteristics. So I'm not just comparing me and you or me and you. I'm comparing me to me. How do I feel? Doesn't matter, you know, it's me. I'm a female. I'm 30 something. And this is how <laughs> this is how I felt when I graduated, and this is how I felt one year later. And so taking out all of that, I found that there's two more variables that are important. So knowing outside resources, knowing where to go. You have an English learner in your class, and maybe you're not prepared to teach them, but knowing where to go and who to talk to was huge, right? There was another one. I have to find it. Um, and then developing, no, said that, developing academic language, and then, oh, analyzing in a variety of evidence. So not just looking at how did they score on the SBAC, how did they score on their NWA, how did they score on this, actually watching them and doing multiple measures and knowing then what to do. You know, because you can't differentiate instruction if you're just looking at one measure. So multiple measures. So those are like, those are my key findings and I thought it was just extremely exciting because it, 
it's both of my theories, right? I didn't have to hypothesize that it's just this or just this. Everything put together. So the so what? So like I said, I talk to professors. And I'm like, add these classes. Let's do it. You know, all excited. And you know, there you have to graduate. You can't. I would love to stay in school the whole, like my whole life, learning, but you can't do that. So we got to figure out a way for universities to incorporate all these into uh, teacher preparation. And if we can't do it at the university level, then looking at K-12. So professional development <coughs> focused in some of these areas that I found will predict you to, to be overall or feel overall prepared to instruct English learners. Because as teachers, we're all going to come in contact with English learners. And seriously, that gap, it's, it's ridiculous to me. So we all need to know what we need to do how we need to do it. And I think that's where, you know, we write these big old dissertations. I have all these great ideas. It's like, okay, now what? So what do you do with that? It's the action piece of it. It's the action research. Like, let's go actually do something. So, <laughs> so I've been working with, um, so I no longer work at CSU. I work at Natomas Unified. I was like, I got to get in there, you know. I got to be there. I got to be a leader. I got to be change. And working with the ELD coordinator there to make sure that they're offering professional development. And I talked to her last week, and she said, you know what? We're going to offer professional development to all of our teachers, not just our ELD teachers, not just teachers who you know, pull in or push out, all of them. Because everyone's going to come in contact with English learners, and we all need to know how to make them successful. Definitely, right? Oh, I got chills. So anyways, <laughs> so <laughs> that was my dissertation. And what I would love for you to take away from all that, because it was a lot of numbers and a lot of numbers. Um, I had a huge file that like shut down my SPSS multiple times. Anyways, I want you to take one of those findings and just focus on one. I mean, I found seven areas of instruction, right? Just focus on one. So I'm going to watch a video tonight about a classroom management skill and learn something new about classroom management or how to differentiate instruction. Just one thing. That's all. Just baby steps. And then just continue learning. Like That's why we're all here, right? We're lifelong learners. And that's just what we have to do. So thank you for letting me present my dissertation.